morning. This is Rabbi Neil, and I have some great news for everybody. It's been a long time, but we're finally able to open up for in-person services this Shabbat on June 27th. I have a couple of things that you need to know if you're going to come uh, and wanted to send this little video so that you knew exactly what to expect when you get there uh, and what to expect as you're leaving so that there's no confusion whatsoever. Our services will be starting just as usual at 10.45 a.m. However, uh, there are some things that have been put in place that make it really, really important for you to get there on time, if not a little bit early. You can't come up too early. Uh, we need you to show up not not before 10.30 a.m. The doors will not be open before 10, uh, before then, so uh, please don't, don't come before 10.30. Masks will be required for all people ages 10 and above. This I know I had mentioned throughout this uh, pandemic and the quarantine that we would follow all of the local regulations and the federal regulations and guidelines. This is one of them. There are several times when um, masks would not be required, and here are the exceptions to the mask rule. Children under the age of 10, while it's highly recommended and strongly advised that they wear masks, we understand the challenge of keeping masks on children. So uh, if your child is less than 10, um, that would be an exception, though we do recommend uh, masks for them as well. If you are participating in the scripture readings for the Torah ministry, that's the Torah portion, the Haftarah portion, or the Brit Hadashah portion, there is a period of time when you will be able to take your mask off. That is only during the reading. You must wear your mask up until you reach the podium. You can take it off for the reading of the word, but then before you leave the podium and go back to your seat, you must put your mask back on uh, before leaving the podium. That's another instance where your mask would not be required. If you have a medical condition that prohibits you from wearing the mask, that is, it makes it more dangerous for you to wear the mask, you are not required by law to wear it. However, you have to contact me to let me know. We want to seat you in a place that's appropriate for somebody not wearing a mask, so you have to let me know ahead of time. You can contact me prior to the Sabbath uh, at rabbinealsaraski at gmail.com. You do not need to let me know what the issue is, but you do need to let me know that there's an issue. Also, um, myself and Kim and anybody else who happens to be up doing the worship uh, would not have to wear a mask during the actual por portion while I'm preaching or speaking or singing or Kim is singing. Um, those are also exceptions to the mask rule. Other than that, you must wear a mask the entire time you're here. If that is an issue, and I understand it may be for some, then please just go ahead and stay home. Watch live services until the restrictions are lifted even more. We will continue our live stream broadcast you know, moving forward every Shabbat. So if you need to stay home and watch online, that is absolutely fine. We will miss you. We are very, very much looking forward to seeing everyone. Uh, but if you have to stay home, please go ahead and stay home. If you have been exposed to the coronavirus or have been in close proximity to somebody who has, please stay home. If you have any symptoms that are known to be associated with uh, the coronavirus or with a cold or the flu, please stay home. If you have underlying illnesses, please uh, stay home if it's going to be dangerous for you to come. Or if you're over... They say 65, um, please consider what's best for you and for your family. And again, our services will be broadcast live so you can stay home and uh, enjoy our services from the comfort of your home. Um, when you get here, if you decide you're going to come, you're going to be seated by an usher. You are also going to have to sit with your family members and we cannot allow, unfortunately, any commingling of families during this particular time. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to wait in the vestibule. The outer doors will be open. Uh, so please wait in the vestibule. You will be greeted 
by an usher. While you're in the vestibule, please maintain your masks and proper social distancing uh, and, uh, and somebody will greet you. We are not going to be uh, seating people uh, after 11 o'clock. Please plan accordingly. Once 11 o'clock comes, those doors are going to be locked and nobody will be allowed in. But let me tell you why. When you come and you're greeted by an usher, we are going to find out from you how many people are in your family party. Somebody will uh, arrange the chairs in the sanctuary to accommodate just that many people. When you come late, that means that somebody is going to have to come into the sanctuary while the service is going, arrange chairs, move chairs around, uh, and, and bring you in to seat you. And that's disruptive to the service, and, and that's not something we want. Uh, so when you're greeted, they'll, they'll get the number of family members in your party. They'll call back into the sanctuary using a walkie-talkie, and somebody inside the sanctuary will make your family group seating. You'll then be escorted from the vestibule into the sanctuary. You can wave to people on the way in. You can wave to people as you're being seated, but you will not be able to uh, go up and greet people. Once you are seated, you must remain in your seats. That also means children. Children will be seated with the families and there will be no uh, alternative arrangements made for children. If you have to get up and use the bathroom, that would be absolutely fine. Or if you are participating in the service, either in the Torah ministry or in the readings. If you realize that you're not going to make it to the congregation by 11 o'clock, please just go ahead and stay home. Enjoy the services via live stream. If you're on your way and something happens that, that's preventing you from making it to the service uh, on time, again, there's, there's just no way we can let you in. Please go ahead and consider everybody else. Turn around, go back home, and enjoy the services live. For those who do come, at the end of the service, we will dismiss you by family group. That means that each group will be directed when to get up and leave. If you must use the bathroom, that's a good time to use the bathroom. We're not going to escort you and walk you back out, out of the building. However, there will be somebody in the fellowship hall ensuring that uh, there's no mingling going on or co-mingling of family groups. You must get up from your seat and head straight outside. So please wait until your family is dismissed before leaving the sanctuary. If you do want to fellowship, outside is a great place to do it. We're not going to be having any coffee service. We're not going to be having any oneg at this point. So there's no reason to stay inside. You are free to bring a beverage to services or a snack for small children or for those with medical issues, but we will not be providing any food or coffee service while, while you're here. Note that the kitchen will be locked and there won't be any access granted uh, during the service. Once you're outside, there are three great places to hang out and fellowship. One is directly in front of the building. Um, as you're looking at the entrance from the outside, on the left-hand side of the building, there are benches, and you can hang out on the benches. If you continue to walk around to the back of the building, there are some benches uh, back there too. Or between our building and the other building in the complex, there are, I think, two picnic benches, and you're more than welcome to fellowship out there on the picnic benches. We truly appreciate those who are willing to help with the setup and tear down of the sanctuary, but only those who have been serving and as essential staff during our shutdown time for live stream broadcasts will be allowed to serve in this way. This is to ensure that all those who come to services will be able to do so safely and limit the risks of COVID-19. We do, however, want to continue to encourage people who want to participate in the Torah reading to come a little bit early as the readings of the scripture are on a first come first serve basis. Because of our current restrictions, the only places that you will have access to during the service are the following. The vestibule, the fellowship hall, the main bathrooms in the fellowship hall, and the sanctuary. All other areas uh, inside of the building are off limits at this time, and that applies to both adults and to children. We know that these restrictions are challenging, but together we can get through this. And this too will pass, these restrictions will loosen, 
and one day we'll be back to worshiping the way we were worshiping before. Kim and I are really looking forward to seeing you guys on Shabbat. God bless you.